Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Matt with Coyote Creek Archery here in Ellis, Kansas. And today's video, I'm going to show you an arrow build, show you how I, how I built arrows for a customer. I go through several steps to make sure that I get things. Um, a really good set of arrows, custom set of arrows for a customer. You can buy arrows off the shelf that are pre-fletched from the factory. Most of the time they're just going to be a, a straight fletch, um, might just be a blazer vein. Um, some of the gold tip arrows will come with more of a specialty vein, which I think will perform a little bit better with, with a fixed blade broadhead. And there's nothing wrong with blazers either. I've had good luck with those for the years. I have had some issues with them sticking to the arrows. And so I've switched to using AAE veins. Mostly we'll use an AAE Hybrid HP, which is a similar profile to a blazer vein. Um, or I'll use an AAE Max Stealth, which um, I'm going to be using on these arrows here. The arrows that I'm going to be working with is a Gold Tip Kinetic Chaos. It's a 340 spine. These are going to be a customer's build. And they have a half outsert with a ballistic collar that goes on the front because it is a 204 inside diameter arrow. So it's a little bit smaller than your standard 246 inside diameter arrow. Um, and it does have a little collar for your knock. It uses a 166 GTO knock and then it has a little bit of a knock collar on the back, helps center that knock up, makes it a little bit stronger, and um, kind of takes some of the, uh, the worry away from Robin hooding an arrow on the, on the back end if you're you shooting at the same spot over and over again. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Um, I'll start by opening these up and um, run them through the spin tester and just see how they're spinning and see where I need to cut from. So I've got the package of arrows opened up this is, again, this is a Gold Tip Kinetic Chaos. It's a 340 spine. And what I like about these, they're a little bit heavier grains per inch. Uh, 340 spine on these are a 9.9 .9 grains per inch. So it's going to give you a little bit heavier arrow, which is nice. Plus, when you add their inserts, I'll show you here. They come with a, it's about a 25 grain aluminum insert. And the collar here is about 10, 11 grains. So you're adding about 36 grains to the front. You do add a little bit of weight in the back end with these these little bushings and it's, like i said it uses just this really small 166 diameter gto knock you can use a different knock um, like an aae ip knock would be really good for these gold tip also makes a, a 204 knock that would be really good for these as well if you don't want to have that little bit of extra weight with that uh, aluminum bushing in the back so i'm going to just run through these real quick and spin test them i use a pine ridge archery spin tester to check all these and I'm not going to show you on video of me just spin testing the arrows but I'll mark um, if I have um, a wobble on one end or the other that way I maybe want to cut that off more a little bit more on one end versus the other end and um, see how that works nice thing is they they put the logo more in the center a lot of guys just they want to see that and see what they've got so I can still cut an inch or two off this back end still get an arrow wrap and you can still still see that logo on there so um, that's the plan um, for what we're going to do next is we'll spin test these and we'll move on to the next step after that Okay, so I've ran these shafts through my spin tester and um, should mention the uh, Gold Tip Kinetic Chaos is a 0 0.025 straightness. Um, so it's a fairly straight shaft to begin with. I did notice a few of them that maybe had just a little bit of wobble. Funny thing was, uh, I think I've got four of them marked here. They were all on the front. The back end spun really nice. So all the wobble that I noticed on those four, four shafts was all in the front. The rest of them spun really true. Um, so we're just gonna cut off the front end of these and um, then we can start moving forward with, uh, with building our arrows. So I'll take them to the saw, I'll cut them to length. With these, you do have to do a little bit of, bit of thinking to get the correct length because you've got um, to figure in with, uh, with your knocks, but then also you have to add a half inch for your um, half outserts that I'm using on those. So. A um, little bit of math involved there, but nothing too tricky, and uh, we'll get these cut to length. So 
We've got all of our shafts cut to length now. We need to square up the ends. I always use a silver sharpie and um, I will mark that. Okay, on both ends. That way I know when I've got that squared up. I'll run it through my, my arrow squaring device and if I have any low spots, it will show up pretty obviously with the, uh, with the silver sharpie on there. Uh, that way we get both ends trued up and um, just helps us with, with our components fitting in there more flush and getting better arrow flight. So we'll move on to squaring our ends. Show you what this looks like you can see the end of this arrow with the silver sharpie okay and as we run it through so now you can see where my low spot is it'll focus see where my low spot is on this shaft maybe and um, I'll keep running that through until that is completely black on both ends um, if you don't mark it and you just run it through a few times, it will help, but you're not going to get it flushed up. I still have just a little silver, silver mark there. We want to get this completely flush. And it takes a little bit of time, but it is worth the effort. Okay, so now we are completely black on that end. So um, this end's good to go. We'll keep working on these. Um, Till we're ready for the next step. Okay, so we have all of our ends squared up, both ends on these shafts. Next thing I want to do, I'm going to put in the inserts. And especially on these arrows, these shafts, I like to put the inserts in first. Um, reason being, if I grab this insert here, some of your standard, um, like your 246 diameter arrows with your standard. Um, gold tip insert, it's 11 grain insert. It's hollow all the way through. So if I was to glue that on, I can get air through the front of that shaft to allow that adhesive to dry. But if I have my knock on the back end of this and I put this insert on, this 25 grain aluminum insert on, that's not hollow all the way through, it creates a vacuum on the inside. Um, I haven't had them wanting to suck out with that vacuum, um, but I have had them take a longer time for that adhesive to dry. So I leave it open on one end and I'll get that insert placed where I want it. And uh, it just seems to set up and dry quicker and do a better job of uh, gaining the strength that it needs to hold that, the, your field point or your broadhead or whatever it is on the front of the arrow, hold that in place. And also to help with that, make sure I'm on the front of the shaft, I, uh, I rough that up. This is just an RCBS. It's a deburring tool for reloading, um, but you can take a, uh, just a, a bore brush. This is for a 223 caliber bore brush. It's just a little bit larger than my 204 diameter arrows. And I'll go through here and I'll just I'll scratch this up just a little bit. And then I clean that up with denatured alcohol. Well, I know a lot of people will use acetone on arrow shafts and have had good luck with it and not had any issues. To me, it's just a little bit more aggressive than I want to use. Denatured alcohol does a great job of getting these cleaned up and I don't have to worry about softening up the carbon or anything like that. Never had it happen. I know a lot of people have had good success with acetone. I've used it occasionally to clean off old veins that are glued directly to the shaft, but I try not to use acetone if I can help it. And I just like to use denatured alcohol to clean the insides. So I'll scuff these up and then I'll use denatured alcohol to clean these up and then we'll be ready to, uh, to put in our inserts. Okay, so I've scuffed up the inside of my shafts. Again, I'm using denatured alcohol and I've just got a little cup and Q-tip. I'm gonna soak one end of the Q-tip in that denatured alcohol and we're gonna clean out the inside of the shaft. And I wanna make sure I get this really clean because I don't want any any carbon dust left behind that's going to interfere with those inserts bonding with the inside of this shaft. And then I'll use 
my clean end and go back and dry and clean up whatever might be left. Denatured alcohol is going to dry really quickly, um, but I go through a dozen of these Q-tips. They're cheap, works really well to clean these up and um, clean the inside of the shaft with the wet end, go back with the dry end and help mop up whatever might be left. Keep moving on until we get through all 12. So all my shafts are cleaned up, ready to go. One little step that I like to do, and um, being that most guys, they don't take the time to um, spine test their arrows. They're not gonna do a lot of knock tuning and that type of thing. Most guys just grab their arrows and they go shoot. Most of my customers are hunting out to yardage of 25 to 30 yards anyways. It's not gonna make a huge difference. It can make a, make a difference. Um, that's something that I, the process that I go through. Not a lot of guys have the knowledge to do that. Obviously as a shop owner, I don't have the time to spend with every person and knock tune every single arrow that they've got. Um, but I want them to be as consistent as possible, knowing that most of the guys aren't gonna go through those steps. So what I will do is I will look at the logo on the side, try to line that up, and I'll put a little mark at the end of the shaft. And I don't know if you can see that. There's a little gold mark on there. I use just a little acrylic gold marker. And um, when I put my insert in, I use a two blade Magnus Stinger broadhead. I put some masking tape over it so I don't cut myself, obviously. I've got my insert on there. And when I put this in, I'm gonna line the broadhead up with that mark so that they're all lined up the same. Does it make a difference? I don't know. I don't know that it does. But to me, I guess with my OCD nature, I want everything to be as consistent as possible. So I line it up with that mark. That way, um, everyone's gonna be the same. When they thread in, your broadhead's gonna line up the exact same, no matter which way it, it ends up being. They're all gonna be the same with the entire set of arrows. Now, again, someone may wanna knock tune those and it's gonna end up being differently, um, but most guys aren't gonna do that and I wanna have that consistency there. So I've got the little bit of denatured alcohol left in my cup. I'm gonna put that on a paper towel and I'm just gonna clean up the insert just to make sure that there's no oil from my hands or anything on there that's gonna stop my adhesive from doing its job. I use AAE Max Impact, really good stuff. I've had great luck with this. Um, it sets up pretty quick, so you've gotta be kinda quick when you work with this, but give this just a second to dry. And I put just a little bit on three sides. These gold tip inserts have a flat spot, and I try to go on that flat spot. And then a little bit up the sides. I'm gonna have some squeeze out on this, but I, want to, I would rather have a little bit extra than not have enough. So now I'm just gonna put this in, do a quick quarter turn, and I'm just gonna hold it there for about 10, 15 seconds. Wait for that glue to grab. You can see I've got a little extra on there. That's what my rag's for. I'm gonna come back and wipe that extra off. Okay, still not wanting to go. Um, so I'm gonna let this glue set up just enough so that I can release the broadhead from there. And then I'll wipe the excess off with my rag. Then I'll set this aside and I'll move on to the next arrow. I do this with all of my inserts and I allow quite a bit of time for this glue to set up. I'll probably set them aside for a couple hours and then come back. I can put my knock in on the back end and um, arrow wraps and then begin my fletching. I may even let them set overnight depending on what time of day it is that I'm working on them. Um, now this is loose enough. It's set up enough where I can take that broadhead out and I just come up and I wipe that little bit of excess off. It takes that gold mark off right with it. So now I've got an insert installed. It's got my little bit of glue taken off of there. Um, set it aside and I can move on my, to my next arrow. So I'll go through the entire dozen like that and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. So I've got all my inserts installed. And um, one thing I forgot to mention is sometimes the threads aren't perfect. They might be just a little bit rough from, from the factory. And that's why I, another reason I like to use a broadhead to install them is I get to check those threads before, before I glue the, that insert into the arrow. I don't want to put an insert into a shaft and glue it in there that is going to have bad threads and you're not gonna be able to get your field point or your broadhead into there. Now, it doesn't happen very often. Maybe 
you know, I build dozens and dozens of arrows throughout the year. Maybe twice a year I may come across an insert that I just can't get a broadhead or a field point to thread into there. And um, I've got to throw it away and grab a different insert. Um, these were fine. I had a few of them that were rough. And what I do is I use a, it's a, it's a gold tip, easy pull point, it's a stainless steel point. So the steel is going to be a little bit stronger. It helps to kind of clean up those threads as I thread it through. I don't want to use the aluminum ferrule of my broadhead um, because I could damage these threads. So I'll use a stainless steel insert, clean those up, maybe blow it out, and then I can thread this right on there. So I had a couple of those that I had, had to clean up, but everything is good. Shouldn't have any issues threading on um, the, the points for the front of your arrow. So I'm gonna let these set here and dry for just a little bit and um, move on to the next step. Most of your arrows are just gonna have just your single knock point, but these kinetic chaos come with this little back bushing piece and it can be really difficult to get this put together. A lot of people, if you're building your own arrows, um, it's hard to get these together. This is the method that I use and uh, there may, some, of, some, of, some of you may have a better way of doing this, but um, I use a little knock wrench. This is just a gold tip knock wrench and I use the size for the GTO knock and I'll just get it started on there like this. And I've got a little plastic mallet. I'll use this little mallet and um, I've got to find the edge of a table or something and I can tap that in there to get them together. It takes a little bit of time, it's kind of a pain, um, but it's much easier than trying to do it by hand. Uh, if you know of a better way of doing this, leave something in the comments for me so I can kind of see what you're doing. Maybe you know a better way of doing this than I do, uh, but this is what works for me and it's what I've been doing, but maybe you've got a better idea and if you do, I gladly would, uh, would, would love to hear about that because um, just to maybe speed up the process. I've never broken one of these doing it this way. I know there's a risk of that, um, but I haven't had any issues and I've done, done a lot of these, uh, these kinetic chaos with these, these knocks. They use the same system on a lot of the um, Hunter Pros. You can get a Hunter Pro with the same knock system, so I, I've built them with this, this, the same way. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do now. While I'm waiting on these inserts to dry, I'll start putting my knocks together. So I've given these arrows about an hour for the insert glue to dry. That should be plenty of time for these. I'm still leaving the knock off of this end while I work with it until I start to fletch. Um, so I like to use an arrow wrap. I know some people think it adds too much weight to the back end. I find, especially on a smaller diameter arrow like this, you can get away with a, not such a large wrap and you're only looking at six grains maybe with an arrow wrap, six to eight grains depending on how long your fletchings are and what you're using, uh, what size of arrows you're using. So for me, it's, it's worth it to use that wrap for several reasons. One, just the visibility of that arrow in flight. You know, if you're, if you're using it for hunting, you shoot an animal, you can look at what you have for blood on your, on your wraps. And it also helps those veins to stick a lot better to the shaft. Another thing I like about them is if you do, uh, you do have a vein that gets torn or ripped or damaged to those, those fletchings in any way, and you have to remove them and refletch that arrow, it's really easy to take the arrow wrap off uh, versus having to, to clean off uh, the remaining adhesive on your, uh, your bare shaft. So I always use arrow wraps. That's my preferred way to go. And um, so that's what we're gonna do next to do that. I'll get the denatured alcohol out again, and I'll use one of my, my shop towels, and we'll clean, clean this off before we apply the wrap. The wraps that I use are just wraps that I make myself. I have a vinyl cutter, and I just buy rolls of vinyl, cut them out to the sizes that I want them, and I have pre-made wraps. It's way cheaper than trying to buy them um, from someone that's trying to sell you wraps at maybe $16 a dozen, $14 a dozen. I can buy a 50-foot roll for about that same price. So I can get a lot of wraps out of that and I don't charge anything to put wraps on people's arrows because it's, it's rather rather inexpensive. So um, we'll go on to arrow wraps. This is just gonna get a white. It will be a, a five inch wrap. So it's gonna be a little bit longer because we're using those Max Stealth and um, then we'll, uh, we'll get on to fletching.
So these Aero Wraps, it's just an adhesive vinyl. It's got a, a backer, it'll peel off. I'm gonna put the sticky side up. I like to use a, a, a mouse pad sort of um, table or whatever underneath to uh, have, have some give to it. This is from Black Obits. It's a full size neoprene mat and it works really well. I'm gonna start out again with my, my label facing up. And I'm gonna leave this a little bit towards the end, no more than about a sixteenth of an inch. Line it up square and just roll right across the top. I use my t-shirt just to make sure I don't have any air bubbles in there and everything sticks down correctly. And now my wrap is applied. I can insert my knock and then we'll move over to um, start fletching. So let me, <clears throat> let me put the wraps on this dozen and then I'll, uh, I'll take you over to fletching these shafts. So I've got arrow wraps on all these arrows. Um, everything is pressed out and ready to go. We need to install our inserts. These inserts will simply just press in. Um, some may be a little more difficult than others because there's not a lot of give to this aluminum compared to if it was all plastic. You may need to take a knock tool to help insert that and it'll be pretty snug. And then again, I use my tool and I want to line that knock up with, um, with my logo. So the index on my knock, I'm going to line it up with the word kinetic 340, same as I lined up that broadhead. So now everything is lined up straight and um, we're ready to start fletching. For fletching jig, I have several of these. This is kind of the tried and true bits and burger. I do use the AAE attachment here. I like it because it gives me some adjustability to get things aligned like I want to. Uh, these arrows are getting a left helical. I do have a setup to do right helical as well, but I'm running three jigs at one time and I spent a lot of time marking these so that they're all very consistent and getting the same same amount of helical on each. I don't know what the exact degree is. I am, I, I would say about 3 sixteenths of an inch off of center to the left. So whatever that means. I don't really have a way to measure the helical. I know a lot of people will say, oh, that's a three degree. I don't know how they're measuring that. I'm, they're probably just guessing. Um, maybe not. But anyways, I want to make sure that I have my... Um, index on my bits and burger jig set for the cock vein and i'm going to start with my knock index up and i'll show you this here in just a little bit but i'm going to put all three arrows into all three jigs and we are using again we're going to be using aae max stealth max stealth veins and being that it's a max vein you have to use a primer pin so <clears throat> these are the veins that we're using these are, I think these are called fire orange, fire orange, and also a white. We're going to use these. We're going to use the Max Weld primer pin from AAE. Um, the Max veins, you have to use the primer pin. If you're using a hybrid vein, you don't, you don't need to worry about using the primer pin. And then um, I've had really good luck with this adhesive. This is the AAE Max Bond. It sets up really quick, so you only need... It says 5 to 10, 15 seconds per vein. By the time I get one glued on and move down to my third arrow, I can come right around and work, work on that second row and just keep going through. Um, I am going to flush these with my cock vein up. So um, we'll put our off color up on these. And I'll move the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. So for fletching these arrows, I lay everything out. I will uh, lay out my veins. I've got two orange and a white, so I'll lay out an orange, a white, and then another orange next to that. You can see that right over here on the right, on be your left hand side. I lay these out in front of each jig. I have a mark that I place. I kind of mark the second to last mark on my jig, and I want to line the back edge of that vein up just like that in the jig. I'm going to use my primer pen. And I have a towel over here that I blot just to make sure that primer pin is actually working because I want to make sure that I get primer on these veins. I don't think it takes a whole lot. I usually just make a couple passes. Using my adhesive, I'm going to put 
five dots of glue on here. Two, three, four, five. And then I have a Q-tip that I've cut the cotton end off of, and I use that to spread my glue out on the vein. And I try to get it even, and I wanna make sure that I've got enough that I get a little bit of squeeze out. So I'll put it in the clamp up above my shaft. I'm gonna bring the back end down, and then we're just gonna press it down. And I like to hold it here for about five or 10 seconds. And make sure that we get good contact. Um, you wanna check this without glue before you glue them down to make sure that your veins are setting flat in the front and the back. Mine were. And then I use a Q-tip and I come along and I clean up any excess glue that may have squeezed out. So I'll do this for all three veins. I'll rotate it around. And um, that's just the process I go through for, for the entire dozen arrows. So show you what they look like when I've got everything fletched up. So I'm just finishing up fletching this last arrow. As I rotate that arrow in the jig, I go back and wipe off the glue on the opposite side of that the vein as well so I get both sides cleaned up. We'll put this last one on and then we can uh, take our first one out show you the finished product. Okay, glue is spread evenly. We're gonna put this on our last arrow. I know you can't see it in the camera. Trust me, I'm fletching arrows. Um, wipe that off. Okay, so I can take this first one out and I wanna come back and check this back side. I've got just a little bit of squeeze out here. So I'm gonna clean that up. And here's my first shaft. Now, this isn't finished. I always take a little bit of super glue. This is just a, it's not an archery specific, it's just a Loctite um, super glue. It's an ultra control gel. And uh, I like this because it's really easy to control what you're doing. And I just put a little, little bit on the front of each vein and on the back of each vein. And I'll do this for all arrows. And that just helps, one, helps keep those veins sticking. You know, maybe you, sh you miss a target, your arrow goes into the grass or something like that. It doesn't, keeps from wanting your, your veins from wanting to be torn off. So we'll do a little bit in the front, a little bit in the back on each of these. Okay, that one takes about five minutes for that glue to dry. We have a collar that's gonna slide over the front of our insert. Make sure this slides all the way on. Okay, so that will go on the front, slides right over the top. You can remove these, which is nice. Um, so this is our, our finished arrow shaft. Um, let, me check, let me check the total arrow weight and see what the weight is, and um, then we'll, we'll finish this up. So I don't have the video uh, capabilities, the camera angle to show you. My total arrow weight came up to 357 grains. So with a 100 grain point, you're going to be 457, pushing 460. If you go with 125, you're going to be pushing 480 grains. Um, so be a really nice, really nice um, arrow. Not not super heavy, not super light, just kind of right there in the middle. And uh, I've shot shot these um, kinetic chaos arrows for a couple of years, and I really like them. I'm shooting a a black label quantum arrow this year that's a little bit lighter, about I don't know 430 grains or so. Um, but it's a great arrow, and that's the process that I go through for building them. I wanted to show you that. One other thing I wanted to mention is uh, some of you may want to build your own arrows at home. And I know it's expensive because you've got to have all these jigs, you've got to have an arrow saw, you've got to have all these different adhesives and these different veins. And if you're only doing a dozen every two or three years, it probably doesn't pay off to have all those, all those things. So hopefully, uh, if you're not nearby, you have an archery shop that'll help you out with some of that if you want to build them on your own. 
I, I love to help my customers out with any way that I can. So if they want to buy just a dozen arrows and have me cut them and square the ends up, I'm, I'm glad to do that for them. I also provide these arrow fletching kits. Okay, so what, what this is, and I, I would do them custom, um, unless I get too many orders for them or something like that. But what this is, is for people that want to fletch their, their own arrows at home. They don't want to have to buy a hundred pack of veins and um, <clears throat> spend $16 a dozen on wraps and all that because it does add up. Just just buying a 36 pack or a hundred pack of veins and your wraps can get really expensive. Um, and you know, at that point you're better off just having your local archery shop do it for you because I can do it for it a lot more cheaper because I'm doing more in, vo in volume and I'm, I'm building a lot more arrows. Anyways, having said that, what comes with this is 14 wraps. Okay, so that's enough to do a dozen plus two extra just in case you make a mistake along the way. Um, I've got two different colors of veins. These happen to be the, the AAE Hybrid HP vein, which I use a lot. It's a great vein. Um, comes with 26 of one color and 14 of another. So you have more than enough to do a dozen arrows with one of these kits. I give you a few extras just in case you make a mistake somewhere along the way. You've got to scrape a few veins off. You can come back and you have a few extras to finish up the job, um, which is really nice. $24.99 is what I charge here in the store. Um, I do have these on my website. If you check out the online store, it's not real fancy. Um, I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, <clears throat> managing the archery shop, building the recurves, trying to do all the, the videos, building strings, building the arrows. I'm really good at that. Uh, trying to develop the website and do the videos is, eh, I do okay. You know, I'm filming this on my iPhone right now. And uh, so the web store is what it is. It's nothing great, but it doesn't look trustworthy, but it is. If you have any questions about it, give me a call or send me a text or an email, and I'll be glad to walk you through that. Um, <clears throat> so you can get these flushing kits on there. I also have, still have some of these Coyote Creek Archery hats if you're interested. I also have these t-shirts if you're interested in that. So all that's on there. Uh, I'm not doing this to uh, drag it rich off of it. It's just I've had some people interested. And so I've got these things on the, on the website if that's something that you're interested. Um, if you've noticed, I've never asked, never asked you to hit like or subscribe like a lot of these annoying YouTubers do. To me, I'm not here. I'm not here to make money off of my YouTube videos. I'm here to educate. I'm here to help you out and provide a service. And uh, if I'm going to make money off of this, hopefully you can see that I'm I'm someone that you can trust, someone that's going to do a good job with your bow or with um, with your arrows or whatever it might be. And you want to bring your business into me and know that I'm going to take care of you. And that's that's what I'm looking to do. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm not looking for anyone to subscribe or get paid by YouTube. Um, I'm doing this as as and education and trying to help you out at home and some of you that some of you that are local I'm trying to encourage you to come into the store and uh, see what I have to offer here anyways that is my process for building arrows I've got um, another nine to do here so I'm gonna get after those and try to get these finished up because we're really close to hunting season and this customer is gonna need these arrows for his bow um, to get out hunting so Folks, thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching these videos. If you have any questions, again, all my contact information is on the website. Feel free to uh, give me a shout anytime. I'd love to help you out. Um, thanks for watching again, and God bless.